Hey everybody, welcome back to Retro Modding News, my weekly show where I talk about what's new and upcoming in the world of retro modding. First up, I don't think it would be a Retro Modding News video if I didn't talk about something that Mike Chi is doing, and he is kind of trolling us really hard right now. I say trolling, but he is seriously trying to get our hopes up with this 4K Retro Tink evaluation board he's showing off. But seriously, it doesn't seem that long ago that the Retro Tink 5X Pro was released, so it might feel bad, man, if you had just purchased that and now Mike is teasing a 4K version of the Retro Tank. But it sounds like he is somewhat serious. He says here that he has currently a few methods working. I guess that means 4K upscaling working, but he needs to take a little bit of time to figure out which of those methods is viable and reliable. 4K upscaling is pretty exciting, and as long as Mike Chi keeps giving us these updates, I'm gonna keep talking about it. Next, let's talk about some interesting Blue Retro news. It looks like Laser Bear is having his hand at developing a GameCube Blue Retro adapter. He's got a picture here of the ESP32 dev kit kind of wired into a GameCube here. This kind of gives me vibes of my project that I was trying to make. It's floating around here somewhere. This one I made for myself for Sega Genesis. But what I like the most is that Laser Bear talks about he's going to try to cascade the connectors together so that you only have to use one ESP32 module. Darth Cloud developed the Blue Retro firmware so that a single ESP32 module can support all of the controllers on a particular system. So you really would only need one ESP32 to power all four controllers on a GameCube. I've talked about a lot of Blue Retro adapters recently, but those are usually one ESP32 module per controller port. So basically you need four of them to outfit a whole GameCube. Four adapters is basically four times as much power draw to get the same sort of functionality. So so I'm really interested to see Laser Bear's implementation of this. You don't know how many hours I've spent trying to think about how you might connect multiple controllers at once to a single ESP32 module. Next, I saw this tweet about how it's possible to defeat TMSS from a Sega Genesis directly from a Sega Genesis cartridge. I don't know a lot about TMSS in a Sega Genesis other than I think it was to block Sega Genesis cartridges that didn't have a license. And I know that Sega Genesis's that have TMSS show that annoying TMSS logo when you're trying to start your Genesis. According to the tweet here, I guess there is a known TMSS disable mod already available, but they're showing off how you can move that mod into a cartridge. So in theory, you might not need an internal mod to bypass that TMSS message to get right to your games faster, which is exactly what Crix here is talking about. Crix, if you didn't know, is the creator of the EverDrive, which is an FPGA flash cart for a lot of different consoles, including the Sega Genesis. And Crix says here that he might be able to do something with the Mega EverDrive Pro in order to implement this TMSS bypass mod. Super cool stuff for people who have Sega Genesis's that show the TMSS warning message. Maybe coming soon, you might be able to bypass that message and get to your games faster. Next, we have a different implementation of this TMSS bypass. This actually comes from Will's console mods, something that you could do internally to bypass that TMSS message. This would be super useful for people who don't have a Mega EverDrive Pro, or possibly if that feature never comes to the EverDrive. One thing to know about this, however, is it's not a no-cut mod. It sounds like there are a couple of traces that need to be cut and wires that need to be attached to this small PCB that Will has made. It looks relatively easy to solder though, so that's pretty cool. Pretty cool mod. I don't have any more information about when this is gonna be available, but I'll make sure to update everybody on my Twitter when it is released. Last but not least, we have this pretty interesting tweet from Nostalgia Nerd about this CRT looking Checkmate monitor. Now, if we look at this picture here, it does look like a small CRT screen. These are actually four by three aspect ratio IPS panels inside of a plastic enclosure to look like a CRT. IPS panels are known for having really good color accuracy, so that's really awesome awesome for actually playing games. But the definite unknown here is what kind of latency can we expect from this type of monitor. Screens like this have some kind of a driver board internally. Basically it translates whatever video signal that you give it into the signal that the actual screen itself needs to display it. If you look at this other picture here, we get kind of an interesting look about the features that this monitor is gonna have. There is about 18 billion inputs on the back of this thing. However, this picture alone is not enough to kind of give you more information about what this monitor actually is. I found this YouTube video that Steven Jones actually released a few weeks ago about these Checkmate displays. You can watch this whole video if you want. It's about two hours long and I'm sure there's a lot of good detail. I just skimmed it and found a lot of good information about the modular features of this LCD screen. First of all, each of the rows in the back panel on this CRT are kind of separate modules. The bottom one is sort of the main input and driver board. I'm assuming that's where the driver for the LCD is going to live, although it could live somewhere else on the screen. But it also has the analog and the digital inputs for the screen itself. So here you see there's two composite inputs, a component input, VGA input, 
and HDMI input. What I think is cool about that bottom board there is that there are headers there, so you can pass through video signals from other modules internally without needing to go outside of the case. If we skip ahead a little bit more, he talks about modules for the top two panels on the screen for both a Raspberry Pi case as well as a Mister. Here you can see this Raspberry Pi daughter board that has the CM4 module in it and all of the I.O. for the Raspberry Pi sticks out the ports in the back. But he did talk about if you wanted lower latency, you can actually internally mount different upscalers inside of it. Here you can see a RetroTINK 2X Mini, and I think there's actually a RetroTINK 2X on the right side there. Those are both mounted inside of this case here, and the HDMI cords are routed inside of the case to that bottom daughter board. The idea of being able to semi-easily upgrade the functionality of this thing is pretty cool. It sounds like all you really need is a 3D printed bracket for a different type of upscaler. Let's say you wanted the RetroTINK 5X Pro in there. You could just 3D print a bracket to hold the 5X Pro and there you go, your functionality is in there. He's also showing off a GBSC module. So if you wanted to use the GBS control, that has a module as well. The GBS control solution, which actually has the GBS 8200 parts kind of mounted to that 3D printed bracket, I like that solution better than just strapping retro tanks inside of this thing. I kind of wish that there was a more elegant solution than just trying to shove retro tanks inside of it. The rest of the video, he just shows off different consoles running on the screen. So if you want to actually see some systems working on it, you can watch the video. I think this is a pretty interesting project. I mean, it's not really for me personally. I prefer having just whatever computer monitor that I'm using and uh, an HDMI upscaler separately. But if you're trying to complete the retro look and feel of a retro computer setup on your desk, maybe with a mister inside of it, I think that this is a really unique option for playing your mister games on. There's supposed to be a Kickstarter coming sometime soon, so hopefully they'll announce how much it's gonna cost and a full list of all the features for this monitor. But I'm curious what you think. Would this Checkmate LCD monitor fit somewhere into your setup? Let me know in the comments below. That's it for this week. If you want to suggest a new story to me, follow me on Twitter or join the Discord. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.